Let's get physical, it's Jordan here back again with this week's update and all the physical releases coming to the Switch, where in the second week of September 7th until the 11th. It was my first week back at work in like two months and I gotta tell you guys, it hit me like a bus, so bear with me this episode. Retail, low print and imports, plus our community spotlight where you show off your pickups and potentially win a physical Switch game. And yes, we are announcing the winner of first press games as giveaway later on, so stay tuned, it could be you. Also, next week is the one-year anniversary of this series. Yep, 52 weeks, not missed a single one, even when there was nothing to talk about. Sadly, I don't have anything major planned as a celebration, but we will see. Uh, anyways, that's next week. Let's talk about this week. As I said, it's been a properly rough week for me, so I apologize if I miss anything. Are you ready? RPG Maker MV is a long-awaited Western release of the game-making tool. Here you can create the RPG of your dreams within certain limitations, however. For a console version, it looks to be fairly robust in what it has to offer, and we had Brian give this a review for us. It was a mammoth task to review something like this, so do us a favor and check that video out. We're also hoping to have a nice little RPG experience for you when the game drops. Because on the eShop, you can download a free app which allows you to play all the created content without paying for the actual game. Awesome! Our RPG is going to be called the Switch Watch Quest, and we hope you can give it a try when the game launches. I'll be sure to put up a community post once it's ready to go, so stay tuned for that. It also looks like it's going to be a lot of fun, and if you're on the fence about this, or perhaps you can't afford it right now, well, let's just say that you're going to want to download the app and play our game. Maybe there's something special in there for you. <clears throat> and this is God of Resins and Dane Wilkinson's Pick of the Week. Minecraft Dungeons is finally set to release physically on the Switch on the 8th. This is an action dungeon crawler trying to be like Diablo sort of thing, but you know, squarely, or should I say cubely, aimed at a younger audience. It's not exactly top quality, but I think Juan enjoyed it in his review if you want to check that out for more information. According to the box art, a download is required, but hopefully that is for the season pass content which is included. Well, we'll have to see on that though. And this is Brent McLean's and Ganicus's Pick of the Week. Avicii Invector, I'm sorry if I said his name incorrectly, is a rhythm game of the late DJ's music. It looks to be a pretty sweet rhythm action game, reminding me of something like Audio Surf, but with a bit more meat to it in terms of what's going on with the gameplay. There's only 25 songs, which is quite a small pool, uh, but I'm sure they're all bangers. Lemon to Run are distributing the Encore Edition in North America, but like most of their distribution titles, they can't really be asked to say what's different about it. Tin and Kuna is expected to release this week on the 10th. This is a 3D platformer as you jump, dash, bounce, and bash your way through levels like a massive pinball. It looks to be fun, breezy adventure, perhaps reminiscent of the recently released Scully, but hopefully this one performs a bit better than that. Inertial Drift is supposed to be releasing physically this week. I believe this is an exclusive to Game, uh, which is a store in the UK. No idea about Europe or North America. There's probably an exclusivity deal somewhere. Uh, anyways, this is an interesting arcade racer that uses twin stick mechanics rather than a standard control setup. I think Juan has this one. Uh, I've read some decent previews, so I'm personally you know, hopeful on this one. Definitely more into arcade racers than Sims, so I'm down for giving this a try. And this is Jonathan Rumors. Pick of the week. Bounty Battle. The ultimate indie brawler is trying to do exactly what it says on the tin, although there's already plenty of competition in that arena. I've already seen this one out in the wild here in China, so it's definitely a thing. Join the dead dude from Dead Cells, that conehead guy from Blasphemous, and the Mexican wrestler dude from Guacamole as they duke it out. My question is, where is Shovel Knight? He's in goddamn everything. The Holy Potatoes Compendium is finally upon us. Maybe. This is a constantly delayed triple pack of humor-filled management sims. I think, I don't know, it's been a while. But anyways, you'll be managing a weapon shop, a space crew, and down in hell. Sounds like a lot of potatoes. By the way, I know the official release date for No Straight Roads is next week on the 15th, but I've seen it out in the wild, so you may be able to pick this one up on your next visit to the game store, or maybe even online. And also a quick mention to Pode, which I talked about last week. I think it had a slight delay to this week, so keep an eye out for this co-op goodness. Alright, the low prince. Shantae is getting the limited run treatment as she so often does these days. She has two physical games going up for order this week. The original game is getting a re-release on the Switch in physical format, which is surely much better than the prices that you'll have to pay for a Game Boy Color cartridge. Yeah, maybe it's not going to be as smooth as some of her latest adventures, but it's nice to have this nonetheless. 
Her other release is Risky's Revenge, which is the second game in the series, with this one originally a release for DSiWare. If I'm being very uncultured, I actually find it very difficult to remember if it's this one I've played or not, or maybe it is another one. They kind of blend together for me, sorry. Uh, but I'm sure it's still a good one, and nice to see it get a physical release. Both of these are getting standard editions as well as collector's editions, which come with all sorts of stuff, including steelbooks, which I know is quite fascinating to some of you. Stranger's Wrath is getting a collector's edition from Limited Run on the 8th. It's already got a standard release, uh, a collector's edition as well, so I suppose this is a belated super duper collector's edition. I don't know. In this box you get the game, soundtrack CD, three art cards, poster and a fuzzle plushie. Very nice. This is a distribution title, not part of their published releases. Alright, let's jump into the imports this week. Just remember, if anything takes your fancy and you'd like to import them for yourself, then there are import links below in the description and the pinned comment. It helps support this series and Switch Watch as a whole massively, you have no idea. It really does keep us going, honestly. And in return, if you use our links, you can also get 5% off your order. Yes, when checking out, if you use the coupon code SWITCHWATCHTV, that's all one word, SWITCHWATCHTV, while checking out, you get 5% off your order, which is very nice indeed. We appreciate you guys very much, thank you. The star of this week is Tomoyo After It's a Wonderful Life. This is a sequel stroke after story to one of the greatest visual novels ever made, Clanad. It follows the characters from that visual novel, Tomoyo in particular. Great art style, lovely characters, it's the perfect accompaniment to Clanad if you own that. And the best thing is that this Japanese release does have English on the cartridge. There is no Western physical announced and probably won't be for a while if there is at all. But don't quote me on that because it's even more niche than the original game, so definitely want to add to the collection if you're into high quality visual novels. For this week, a massive heads up that Murder by Numbers, the Play Asia exclusive, is being sent out. This has been up for pre order for a couple of months now and is ready for the world to see, in a standard edition as well as a limited edition, which supposedly they still have a few left of. I was really quite enthusiastic when this one was announced. It's a mix between mystery adventure game like Phoenix Wright, bludgeoned together with Picross, which is one of my favorite puzzle styles. So, you know, I loved Mario Picross. So, yeah, the collector's edition is probably the way to go, as it's only marginally more expensive. Plus you get a soundtrack CD, uh, the music being made by the people who did Ace Attorney, so that says something. You also get an art book, mini keychain, and sticker set alongside the manual of the standard release. For 5 bucks extra, it would be silly not to, I can't wait to get my hands on it. Plus you may well be seeing two of their other games coming in the next week or two, Moro Crystal H and Distraint Collection if you want to save on shipping costs and get them together. Just a heads up on that. Obakedoro is a name that may be somewhat familiar to those who are already into importing niche stuff. This is a cutesy cops and robber style game that released physically in Japan last year. One of the most obscure import exclusives that have English for sure. Well, Asian regions are getting their own version with English cover art instead of Japanese. I mean, what's there to say? It's, there's probably not a whole lot of quality here, but still one you may want to take a look at to bolster your collection if you're into importing. There's no Western release for this. I like the art style, kind of like Tim Burton-esque, and the cover art is pretty sweet too. Metal Max Reborn is a sweet ass looking budget JRPG set in a post apocalyptic world, unapologetically inspired by Mad Max. This is an enhanced port of the game that released a while ago, but the first time on the Switch and it includes all the DLC. I was super disappointed to see that this release does not have English, since it was translated previously already. But one would hope that NIS America's involvement in the past would mean that a Western release isn't too far away, maybe one for next year. Alright, let's jump into the community spotlight where you show off your pickups, and if you're featured, then at the end of the month you'll be in the draw to win a physical Switch game. I have decided on this month's prize. This is special thanks to the good people at Pixel Heart once again. They've allowed us to give away Super Trench Attack, which is one of their most recent releases. Yeah, we already gave away Finding Teddy 2, now we have this nice little obscure title that will fit nicely into anyone's collection. So yeah, if you send in a picture and we feature it this month, you'll be in with the chance of winning Super Trench Attack. Once again, many thanks to Pixel Heart. Please check out their stuff. They're an awesome company, very nice and friendly. Plus, they have some great games, which always helps. 
Okay, so what have I got this week? Well, following on from last week's A Whole New World, I may as well do the double with the other one that I got in, Shadowbug. These are both from First Press Games, their first titles. I know from the comments last week this was definitely second pick for almost everybody, but you know what, yeah, it may not be all that appealing by looks and concept, but in all honesty, I would say it's the better of the two as a whole. I mean, yeah, a whole new world looks cool, uh, and that's why I got it, but Shadowbug is probably just that little bit better as a fully fleshed game. In this package, like all their other standard editions that First Press Games do, you get this gorgeous little sleeve that goes in line with the trilogy to form a nice picture. Of course, you get the actual game, a quick instruction card that goes over the basics, a proper full colour manual that actually smells like a manual. Honestly guys, these are worth the price alone just for that like 3 seconds of scent that goes up your nose once you pop open the case. It takes me about 20 years. The manual is fantastic and you can tell that it's put together with love. And also you get a very chunky silver coin. Personally, I've never seen the need for like coins or steel books, you know, like little trinkets, but I think first press games have won me over. These are really chunky, really nice and so shiny and precious. The game itself is pretty good. It makes heavy use of motion controls and point controls of the Switch Joy-Cons, which is not commonly seen on the system, so it's fairly unique in that aspect. And it's just a really fun adventure. It's not perfect, uh, but still a very solid title. This is First Press Games' second release. They have seven in total so far. All have standard editions and collector's editions. And because we're giving away either Shadowbug or A Whole New World, as a thanks, you know, guys, do us a favor and head over to firstpressgames.com to check out what they've got. The giveaway was totally their idea, to be honest, so it would be a courtesy to have a quick browse as a thank you. Speaking of the giveaway, are you ready for the winner? Chosen completely at random, uh, as long as the comment wasn't, like, total gibberish. The winner is... Enigma2274! Congratulations! In the comments, please leave a good way for us to contact you privately, and we will sort you out with Shadowbug. Alright, on to you lot. Anaheim Rookie got in the Spirit Hunter duology there, plus a recent release in Scully, which looks pretty fun and unique. Chris Giles got in the impressive looking Spirit of the North Signature Edition, really beautiful to look at, plus a couple of indie classics, Black Future 88 and Hollow Knight. Tim got in a nice quad pack of Super Rare stuff, yes that's two games in the Steam World pack, looking very nice. Valiant Spain sent in these two games with the special edition of State of Mind, had no idea it got a special edition. Plus, the lovely looking little nightmares, I can't wait for the second one. Michael the Mad Samurai sent in a bit of an eye dazzler with some gorgeous importing, including B-side games as golf stories, so much better than limited runs. Plus some other nice things as well, Final Fantasy Double Pack, beautiful, also Iron Fury which so far only has a European release, but I have seen that Limited Run will be doing something with this for America, whether it's a mainline product or distribution, that remains to be seen. Yikes Bike sent in this photo with some good looking games, Ghostblade HD exclusive to Play Asia. I honestly can't believe that this hasn't sold out yet, it's a shooter goddammit. Speaking of shooter imports, Caladrius Blaze is one of the more accessible too, worth an import for sure. Daryl Gonzalez sent in this picture with the awesome Valkyria Chronicles 4, a very unique game on the Switch if you're into strategy, plus Captain Tsubasa, really happy to see that. Speaking of which, Santa Tartaruga sent it in also along with the US release of Super Trench Attack, the US version exclusive to VGNY, and they got in the number 451. Remember, we will be giving away the European version, which has a slightly alternative cover. Wrathful Zeus wanted to point out that Funbox Media aren't 100% shovelware, as with the nice Everspace. They also did Helmet, which is a legend in here too, so yeah, even a broken clock is right twice a day. Anyways, just for laughs and giggles, one of their upcoming physical releases is Waifu Uncovered, which is absolute crap. And as a side note to that also, I am a little disappointed with East Asia Soft, as I did ask them about a physical release when I was writing my review last month, and they said no, which was obviously a lie. They really need to work on their marketing vagueness. Matthew Hutton showed off Shmup Collection in the best way possible with the nice flip grip, play Wolf Flame, which may be my favourite of the three games included. Mainly Joe got in a mix of RPGs and cultured games. I'm still not touching Gun Gun Pixies with a barge pole. My culture only goes so far. Switch Guy 42 got in Ring Fit, plus a couple of games up there at the top, including the very desirable import of the Gresaya Trilogy, which is a beast of content. Three massive visual novels in one, exclusive to Japan, but has English on the cartridge. It ain't cheap though. 
Cloud's Nightmare wanted to catch up with his recent additions. If you want obscure stuff, get on those Let's Sing releases. Honestly, I cannot keep track of them. If one ever releases, I'm guaranteed not to include it in these episodes. Choco Loco James didn't have a game to show off, but instead showed off his colourful collection of Pro Controllers. Very nice. Still don't have one. Spawn7 got in the lovely looking Finding Teddy 2 from Pixel Heart. Love the cover art for this one. You can definitely see you're getting ready for a dangerous adventure. Reminds me so much of old school Zelda. Gideon sent in this picture of some big games on the Switch, mix of AAA goodness and older ports of great games. Some of those I need adding to my collection too. Rich Bergen got in some fine games, the very new release of Ari, which is looking crisp and clean, plus the two North American versions of Finding Teddy and the Shmup Collection. Also, Liddy and Suel is a legit underrated JRPG on the Switch. E Rock Z got in two games that aren't even out yet. Good old New York not giving a shit. I approve. Minecraft and RPG Maker. Who's getting these two? I think we'll see a couple of these next week. Palmer just wanted to make me jealous. You do not win my approval, you earn my bitterness. And Lord X. Robert's got in these two games, The Missing and Toki. Really liking that manual style from The Missing. Our regular reviewer, Alex, got in The Missing too. I know he's very pleased about it. He's been waiting forever. And he was much more impressed with this package compared to the last one he got. Apparently, they actually put effort into the back of the box this time. Jonathan lamented a slow month, but still some fun titles in here. The Mercenary Saga is the budget Final Fantasy tactics that you may be waiting for, unless Banner of the Maid gets a physical release finally. Neverbirth got in this haul, including a game I totally forgot got a physical release. The latest Leisure Suit Larry game. I have no idea if it's good or bad, but probably not looked on kindly for its sense of humor these days, I would guess. Our executive producer, God of Resin, has some very nice posts this week with lots of low print goodness. Streaming on the corner showed off some fantastic games including Momodora, which is not seen often. I don't know if this is only just being sent out or was one of the lesser ordered games, but you know, it's nice to see. Our executive producer Ganek has also got in the quad pack of super rare stuff, looking very nicely packaged. Griffin sent in this picture with some limited run goodness in the Mighty Switch Force collection. You have to give way forward credit, they really know how to make sharp, colourful art styles. Hayoshi got in these games, they also got in The Missing, plus Nexomon. Chris Hepburn picked up some classic fighting in Street Fighter Collection, love that logo, so iconic. Marty Mar also got in The Missing, plus my friend Pedro, can't go wrong with a sentient banana. Boombox got in this healthy selection of games, Snack World, I thought that was going to be a big hit when it first released since everyone seemed to have bought it here in this series, but I think this is the first we've seen in a good while now. Visipon finally got in the game she's been seeking out forever, the Asian release of Daedalus, which is the only physical version that has English, not easy to get a hold of. YZ got in a brand new release in Jump Force Plus, two nice visual novels, The Fox Awaits Me, in the middle there, an import exclusive that does have English, a nice one for fans of the genre to import. Joel Parker sent in a sharp looking photo of Nexamon. I can see this one being a minor sales hit despite our review of it. I finally found a seller over here in China who has it, but you know, it's a little pricey right now. I'll wait till it comes down a little bit. Horse Flesh Flavored Ice Cream, lovely name, got in these two games. I know Wargroove was a bit of a bargain for him, so I highly recommend this game to fans of Advance Wars. Annie May got in some impressive signature editions. They always do some great stuff there, especially the Streets of Rage one. They really went to town on that one. Flyro also got in the State of Mind Special Edition. Is this a new release or just like a total fluke that two people showed it in one episode? Crit Cat was happy to finally pick up Room Factory 4 Special, a great game if you want more action orientated Harvest Moon or Story of Seasons. Jordan Williams, hang on, only one Jordan allowed around these parts. Anyways, they picked up some nice stuff including the more obscure Hard West, which took a long time to arrive, not surprising though, considering it's only out in Europe. And finally, to end this week, we have Guru, who showed off these games, love a good Windjammers, really wish I could have picked that one up easily, I only reluctantly give my money to Limited Run when it's the like, truly, truly special game, so I had to pass on this one sadly. Alright, thanks ladies and gents, it's always fantastic to see what you've got. Please send me your pictures over on Twitter at so what about game. You can DM me so I can keep track of it, or you can tag me and use the hashtag let's get physical and I'll give you a nice little retweet too. Or you can email it to us at contact us at switchwatch.co.uk. Just make sure you start the title with community spotlight so I don't miss it. And please do not use uh, the email form on the website. Don't use that because it's not the email that I use. I use contact us at switchwatch.co.uk. Okay, please use that one. 
And you can also join our Discord and submit your picture there in the submission section. Uh, we can also have a nice little chat with you guys. Very nice place. Uh, the server link is below in the description. All right. Thank you ever so much for watching this episode of New Physical. Special thanks to our executive producers, Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Brett McLean, Jonathan Room Organicus, and all the others who have joined our memberships. Thank you for your support. It really helps us out. Plus, you watching right now. Yes, you. If you watch all the way here, you are a legend because, you know, the longer you watch, the more it helps us out. Honestly. Honestly, please check out last week's episode in case you missed it. Plus, check out some of our other content that we've got waiting for you right now on the screen. We'll see you guys over there. Take care.